Joining me now is candidate for Agriculture Commissioner Naomi Blamir. Naomi is a first-generation Haitian-American minister, community leader, author, wife, and mom. She's been involved in the North Miami community for years. Naomi, thank you so much for joining us here on Impact. Oh, my God. Thank you so very much. I'm honored to be here. Thank you for the invitation. It's our pleasure. Okay, so, primary. You received almost 700,000 votes. You're running for Ag Commissioner, Commissioner of Agriculture, and a lot of people know you as the Democrat that's running in this race. But we just mentioned you're a wife, you're a mother, you're a small business owner, community advocate. How would you describe yourself for those that don't know you? So for me, first and foremost, I'm a mom. I'm a mom of a six-year-old little boy who's growing and who is extremely inquisitive and learning. Um, I'm an advocate. I have been in my Haitian American community in North Miami for over past seven years and I have consistently been engaged in ensuring that we, we have our voices heard and that our needs are met as a community. I also serve as a commissioner on the Planning Commission in the city of North Miami. I am the elected vice chair for the Commission for Women, and I also sit as a small business owner on the CRA board. And so I would say those um, titles mm -hmm. uh, encompass what I do as a person. Um, nevertheless, I'm a heartfelt woman, and I truly believe in serving and in serving every single one of us to ensure that we have the opportunities and the resources that we need. Why did you think this was a good fit for you, the seat? So first and foremost, I looked at the history of the seat. In the 1800s, when the state of Florida was being established, it was not called Commissioner of Agriculture. It was called Commissioner of Immigration. Mm -hmm. And I quickly tied that to my grandmother, who came here in the 1980s, could not read, write, or understand English, but needed to make a living. And she found that living in Immokalee, picking tomatoes. And my grandmother was a farm laborer for over 10 years. But not only did she work the farm, she invested in me. And she, I believe, has helped to produce the woman that I am today. And so when I looked at the fact that the agricultural industry um, has been carried on the back of immigrants, I thought to myself, why not? And then I looked at the fact that the current commissioner, Nikki Fried, was going to be running for a governor. And at the time, she had just announced her uh, run. And I stated to myself that Democrats have a responsibility to retain the seat. Prior to her taking the seat, it had been some 20 plus mm -hmm. years, right. two decades before we had a Democrat um, in a statewide seat. So I decided to go for it. Well, we mentioned earlier that you, you received close to 700,000 votes in the primary. You had received many endorsements for this seat, and yet some of those endorsements were rescinded by some of the top Democratic players in South Florida and in the state of Florida. It seems to revolve around two issues, the LGBTQ community and the abortion rights issue and some social media. So can you clarify to us what happened and why did they rescind those endorsements? So there are about six endorsements that were rescinded. Mm -hmm. And what I would like to share with the people of the state of Florida is that I have always been pro-choice. As a woman, as a woman of color, as a woman of Haitian descent, I believe in every woman's right to choose what is best for her. And I believe also in the LGBTQIA plus community being able to live their authentic self without discrimination, without uh, being oppressed or without anyone um, getting into their space and dictating what they should do based on that person's personal beliefs. And so that is what I want to make very clear and I thank you for the opportunity to be able to share that. Um, nevertheless, um, I am disappointed that those uh, leaders rescinded their uh, endorsements uh, for me. Nevertheless, I am grateful of the 700,000 voters that decided that I would become the nominee and voted for me 50.4%. And so for me, that encouraged me, that motivates me, and that is giving me the fuel that I need in order to win come November 8th. Are you trying to reach out to those people again to try to rectify what has happened or to try to clarify your stance? 
Currently, right now, we have made the attempt to reach out to them. Uh, but nevertheless, immediately when it happened, we did put out a statement making it very clear what my position on abortion was, how I am an ally of the LGBTQIA plus community, and how I am going to serve the 22 million residents of the state of Florida without prejudice. And I think that is the most important thing for every voter and even those that rescinded their endorsement to know and to believe that they can count that this is who I am and this is how I'm going to lead. Naomi, you are Haitian American. What would a win mean for the community, for the Haitian American community? Jackie, thank you. I am the first Haitian American in the history of this state to run statewide. A win for us means that we have a seat at the table. A win for us means at every election cycle, resources will come into our community so that we can engage the voters and so that they can know who the candidates are and that they can make an informed decision. A win for us would mean that on a national level they begin to consider our issues. Issues that have pr practically nothing to do with the Commissioner of Agriculture. That's what I was going to ask, right? Issues mm -hmm. that practically has nothing to do with the Commissioner of Agriculture the issues that would allow us as a people to grow and continue to thrive in this country and in this state. So let's talk about some of the issues. What would you say is the most important issue that as Ag Commissioner you would have to address early on if you were to win this seat? So Jackie, I have four main priorities. One of them is I want to ensure that every child in the public school system gets a nutritional breakfast and lunch. As a mother, that is a priority for me. Second, I shared with you that my grandmother was a farm laborer and she worked in Immokalee in tomatoes. I want to ensure that every farmer in this state has access to capital. I have 20 years of experience as a retail manager, commercial banker. I work for the second largest bank in the United States. I'm also a nonprofit leader. I want to bring that body of experience to the table to ensure that we get them access to capital so that they can grow and scale their business. As a small business owner, I, I know I need capital in order to grow my business and they are no different. Thirdly, the concealed weapon license. Mm -hmm. The current commission has done a great job in ensuring that the NRA stays out of our politics and out of this department. And I will do the same. Every person who applies for a concealed weapon will be completely vetted. Those that should get one would get one quickly, and those that shouldn't will be denied. Last but not least, the hemp economy is now a $4 billion industry, and people that look like me, Jackie, we're not at the table. We don't have access to it. I want to look at the process. I want to look at the, uh, the application process. Right now, just to apply, you need about a, over $100,000. So obviously, medicinal marijuana is legal in the state of Florida, but not recreational. Correct. Nikki Freed is in favor of making recreational marijuana legal in the state of Florida. How do you fall on that? I do agree that it sh we should follow with the 21 other states that have made it legal. And not only that, Jackie, we should move with overturning sentencing for those that are sitting in prison for having a small amount of marijuana on their person. Listen, if you're making $4 billion, why do we have people sitting in prison for it? I think that it's a holistic approach where we now begin to look at different aspects of the problem and restoring individuals that are now sitting in prison and allowing them to come back home. Naomi, once again, thank you so much for joining us here on NBC6 Impact. Good luck to you. Jackie, the pleasure was all mine. Thank you.